Miami can't finalize a deal for Damian Lillard. Is it time for Pat Riley to put down his harpoon when it comes to chasing a whale? Plus, Dwayne Wade takes one step closer to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Deion Waiters explains his struggles over the last few years since he left Miami. And is NBA free agency dying? At least one agent thinks so. We debate this and more on today's edition of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On. Eat your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg. Here as always, Dave Vermill. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, your favorite podcast app, thanks so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. We'll get to Dion Waiter's comments about his time with the Heat. Dwayne Wade's Hall of Fame induction and the NBA's new flopping rules in a little bit. But first, and a story for GQ by friend of the show, Howard Beck. Uh, Howard spoke with longtime NBA agent David Falk, who criticized the NBA, its players, and free agency for being boring. I recommend reading the piece uh, in its totality. But one of the quotes to come out of it that caught my eye was this, quote, I find it sort of a little bit boring. You don't need free agency because these teams, the minute the guy says, I don't want to be on the team, they accommodate him. I think it's terrible. End quote. David, there's so much to get into here, but I also found this other piece by the ringer, Zach Cram, kind of outlining the fact that, um, you know, you don't really need free agency anymore to David Falk's point here. Um, Basically, since the decision, and we all remember the decision, You've had LeBron move, you know, obviously to Miami, the big decision, then to back to Cleveland, back to the Lakers in 2018. You had Kevin Durant in 2016 to Golden State. You had Kawhi in 2019 to the Clippers. But since Kawhi moved to the Clippers, you've only had two players since 2019 sign contracts worth more than $100 million in total. You had Jalen Brunson last year and Gordon Hayward when he signed with the Charlotte Hornets in 2020. Uh, Here are the top five free agents ranked by ESPN going into this summer. Kyrie Irving, number one. James Harden, number two. Number three was Fred Van Vliet. Number four was Kristaps Porzingis. And number five was Dante DiVincenzo. Was the fifth best free agent, according to ESPN. Eliminate Kyrie, really. I mean, he was a free agent, but everybody knew he was going back to Dallas because nobody else that was interested in him had cap space. James Harden opted back in, so he wasn't even he didn't even become a free agent, so you can wipe him off the board. So you're left with Van Vliet, Kristaps Porzingis, and Dante DiVincenzo. Combine that with the fact that with this moratorium and all this stuff, on July 1st, you got the flags waving. All right, here comes the start of free agency, and everything's basically done within a couple of hours. Um, I thought this piece was very poignant. I thought David Falk... Uh, even though he's not really in the business anymore. He was, of course, Michael Jordan's agent, among other superstars uh, in the 90s. But I thought his point was right, and I do actually agree with him. I think free agency is pretty boring, and I think that's uh, it's it's tough for the, for the NBA to admit it, but I think that's where we are for a variety of different reasons. What stood out to you? Uh, I think he's way off base, to be honest with you. I think it's the huh. cryings of an old man who's lost his place in the structure of the NBA universe and, and it sees what he has built being torn down. It's a man who built a castle out of stones and is complaining about a much bigger skyscraper out of glass being built right next to it. That's far better and far more structured than anything he did. Like he he's talking about it and he mentions it. He's like, Oh, it's boring. There's no negotiation. He wants to feel important. And I think it's something that's pretty normal for people as they continue to age and see the role that they had in carving out the NBA. He was the agent for Michael Jordan, as you said, Patrick Ewing, Alonzo Mourning, Juwan Howard, Gary Payton, and so many others. Like he had some superstar players at his time in the 90s, but his time has passed him by decades ago. I, I think it's ridiculous when you look at, oh, we haven't talked about contracts that are over $100 million when James Harden's going to sign one, Jalen Brown's going to sign one. We have players opting for lower amounts of money in total because they're taking less years so that they can keep their freedom. We, we tend to, as media members, gripe about a lot of stuff. We're seeing with Dan Lillard. <laughs> we're seeing with people asking for trades and things of that sort. We want, we want things to stay the same, and then we kind of rebel when things change. And I think David Falk is doing it as an, on a bigger scale here and saying, oh, it's no fun anymore. I, where is, where's my role? And he says it. He says yeah. the players don't even need agents anymore. And he's yes. trying to see – I started to see Incredible his time quote. sail by from, from the, the old agent's retirement home. 
you know, him and a couple of others hanging sure. out there watching everybody go by there and get their money without his services. And it's it's not true. Like agents play a role. We're seeing this. We've seen it with Bernie Lee. We're seeing this with Aaron Goodwin. We've seen this with tons of agents. Like that, they have a, a special role. It's just not the same thing that that Falk remembers. It's not. About- it's not free agency. To your point, it's a lot of that behind the scenes. It's what Aaron Goodwin is doing right now with Damian Lillard. That's his job. Right. Damian Lillard's yeah. a max player. And, there is no negotiation. He did his negotiations contract. years ago when he got Damian the contract in the first place. Like to Fox Point, and it, he says it. It's like you've got a hundred million dollars, and his role. And it says, let's say that the, the cat salary cap is $100 million. His role was to say, well, look, Michael is Michael. You've got to give him as much of that money as possible. Right. And then you can worry about signing Scott Williams or, you know, anybody else that was a role player in the Chicago Scott Bulls. Williams you know, drives oh, by. Does Steve Kerr get anybody? What's that? A little Scott Williams drive by. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I saw him at the... Uh, no, no, the retired players association media day. Oh, okay, all right. He's on your Give mind. Me a copy of his new book. No, he's, he's no, happy. I, he's, is is yeah. he? I, I I get where you're coming from. The motivations behind this it does sort of feel a little bit gripey. And who knows? Did Howard Beck call David Falk, or did David call? They did David Falk call Howard Beck when a gripe. I would love to ask Howard that, but. Um, I'm sure, he just I, bumped into him. And he's like, "Oh, what do you think of the summer going on?" He's like, "Ah, oh, could have been just that." So Falk might have been in Vegas, and they just caught up. But I. Despite the motivations behind it, I still don't disagree with anything he said. I really don't. Did you? For I'll, I'll ask you this: Did you find free agency in it? Because you brought up Jalen Brown. Jay, those are extensions. Those don't count. Damian Lillard got an extension. I'm ta- we're talking about free agency. We're specifically talking about free agency and the NBA What's the trying to build. Well, the NBA is trying to build an event around. Hey, it's July 1st, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., whatever time it was. All right, all engines go. Like start, come off the starters block and. It's just the free agency part of it isn't interesting. Like Fred Van Vliet is a fine player. Him going to Houston to me isn't interesting. It's not drawing eyeballs to the NBA. The NBA here, in in just the business sense of it, is trying to carve out an event. And the event has kind of flopped. And to Falk's point here, it's because some of these other things, like extensions are great. But you also don't negotiate extensions. You're either the max player or you're not. And that's it. And then if you're, if, if, well, that's, it's a negotiation, isn't it? It's like as, not as, really. As I, I think agent. what he's saying in terms of like I think about like the NFL, for instance, like the NFL free agency goes on so long because you do have an opportunity to be a little bit more creative in terms of how the contracts are structured. He well, is has 53 he does, man and a 53 man roster. There's a lot more free agents to deal with. There is, but like that's also not like there's no max salary, right? And there's sure, no I like mid level yeah. exception. Like when he says it's a paint by numbers sort of negotiation, it's not wrong. You're either a mid level player, you're a minimum player, or you're a max player. Like how much negotiating. What player is getting $2 million less than the max? Like, it doesn't happen. You're either the max player or you're making $12 million, and that's it. Or you're a minimum. Uh, and yeah. so I, I kind of agree with all of that. And, and yeah, like, because players avoid free agency because they're just finding ways to get to their teams without becoming a free agent. I'm not here to, to debate the player empowerment part of it. It is what it is, and that's been a conversation. But in terms of it eroding the free agent part of the business, I think that that is yeah. absolutely true. I mean... I think it's changed. I don't think it's eroding. I think it's changed, and I think we're having a hard time processing how it changes. I mean, I know Falk certainly has, but I'm a little surprised to hear you say that that it, you think it's. It's not worse as fun as I want it was. to be. It's not as fun as I want it to be. I liked like I mean, remember with LeBron. I mean, partly biased here because he ended up coming to Miami, but that was a lot of fun. Like tracking the plane and all that. It's ridiculous, though. but it's fun. Like even yeah, Kevin Durant was, in 2016, I just. I, I hear you. I don't but think there was no superstar, this. right? There was no yeah. superstar this time around to negotiate. There wasn't a superstar it, like, last year. There wasn't a superstar the year before that. Because they signed as a hundred million plus dollar deals in 2019, right? So they're still under contract. So, or you get your. Extension. So do we have a super? We have a superstar problem. There's just no more superstars. I think there are plenty of superstars that, are, that have gotten paid that deserve their money, and when they want to have either a change to their roster or a change to their location, their geography. They ask for it in a different yeah. way, yeah. Uh, and I think any opportunity for player to have uh, for a player to have the freedom to say pay me or move me, I think is better because this league is about players. It's not just about movements. I don't it's not just about deadlines. It's not yeah. just about negotiations behind the scene. At least to me, I, I just no. But did you me, enjoy the free agent part of it? I'm not like I never I, cared you're, about the you're free arguing that part. part. Did you enjoy about it. what? I never cared about it. Like what, what are we talking about? You really like. We're still glued to Twitter anyway. Like, did, did it matter that yeah, it was Fred I just, Van Vliet I, and no, not I was, Kevin Durant? 
Yes, that mattered to me. I was over. I was under. Like an hour and a half in, we're getting alerts that like Yuta Watanabe signed a minimum with Phoenix, and I'm just like, that's that's, that's it, man. Like that's a big I move. Won- I don't know. I, w- I, I, the other part of it is that, like, even that's a big move. <laughs> it's like two years or two hours in, it's just like, you're done. Like even in the NFL right now, we're still wondering like, you know, where's Dalvin cook going to sign? You know, you're still negotiating. Con- like, I, think it, out. There's gonna be, but, but, look, man, I wish like, it was just longer and more important. That's all I wish it was. And I think the NBA wishes it was. It's, it's a, a been two weeks and we're still talking about Dame Lillard's trade request. Dame Harden but hasn't the, done anything. These like are off. That's not free agency. Those are trade requests. That's different. It's separate. The off season, I think, in the NBA is very interesting. It's all tied together. That's what we're. I don't disagree we're kind with of you, worried. but free agency, I wish was. I don't know. I think you and I are arguing the same thing, but kind of differently. Um, all right. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised. It's were you all, were you enthralled with the free agency part of free agency of the off season? I, I don't think. I don't think I ever have been. I, what do I mean, you like? I, I'm just. What do you like about the NBA? You like. A, I, I like. I like everything about it. I, I you like don't like the draft. Players. You don't like free agency. <laughs> you don't care about championships. Like I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to figure out why you watch and work in this sport. I, just, I don't get I, it. I love the game, Wes. The game is. You just like the, the ball bouncing are... up and down. <laughs> You don't like. Isn't that what we're talking about? Like, like, like before we started covering the league, was it always all, all just about watching the game and enjoying it? Like, isn't that what's fun about it? No, like watching no. The team it's win. the off. It's the off the court drama. It's the It's the IG sleuthing. It's player <laughs> movement. It's all. That's what's fun. That's what's fun. Yeah. I'm being uh, changing, tongue in cheek. I'm being tongue in cheek. Obviously, obviously about that. The, the changing the font. What was it? No, the, the the color scheme of LeBron's website. LeBron's oh foundation's website back in 2016. Uh, Did you uh, see the? Excuse me. Yeah, the Sacramento Kings changed the colors of their logo. The gray is slightly darker now, or maybe lighter. Oh my god! So, big stuff. Big stuff. <laughs> big stuff. He so, called I mean, David Fox. See if you can get. When you're trying to take that championship later. leap, you know you got to start changing the shades of your grays. You know. Coming up, who has made the most? Uh, who has the most to lose with the NBA's new flopping rule? Also, Allen Iverson inducts Dwayne Wade into the Hall of Fame. We're going to talk about that next. But first, David, tell the listeners about our sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Whether you're dealing with decisions about your career, a relationship, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move forward with confidence. And excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And when you need some help, when you want somebody to talk to about some of the problems you might be facing or the tough choices that you might be dealing with on a daily basis, then you might need therapy. And if you need therapy, then BetterHelp is the one for you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched up with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. A friend of mine uh, used BetterHelp. I recommended it to him because they were a sponsor of our show, and, and he tried it, and he loved it. He found somebody conveniently online, made a switch at one point, no hassle, no big deal, just went and found somebody else he felt comfortable talking to, and he absolutely loves it. He appreciates the shout-out. And if you're looking for a therapist, then BetterHelp is the one for you. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com. Slash lockdown NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Every day, or is make sure that you are subscribed to the latest on Damian Lillard, Summer League, and the Heat's boring offseason. There we go. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and you're on your favorite podcast app. I just want to know the, like, I think we've got some David heads and some West heads out there. I think we've like, I think the, our audience is pretty much split in two. Just very curious to, to hear their thoughts on whether or not they thought free agency was fun or boring. Can't imagine that there's a whole lot of David heads agreeing with David right now, but. <laughs> what the, the, that's what makes them David heads, man. They're loyal. Let's get to some heat news. Alan Iverson will be on, will be the on stage presenter for Dwayne Wade's Hall and Fave induction. Do you like the choice, David? I do not. Um, oh, I understand. First of all, I think it's a personal one. So, I mean, I, I totally is. understand. Like, I think it's something that we overlook with those players of that era. Like LeBron's talked about it. Kobe, uh, to a certain degree, even though he wouldn't give that credit to anybody but himself. Uh, but, you know, the, the importance of Allen Iverson 
to that next generation of players, it can't be overstated enough because they just yeah. they, they quote it almost verbatim: the pound for pound greatest player, etc. His flash, the fact that he intermixed black culture with the NBA to a different degree than what people had seen up to that point. And of course, then you, know, you have the David Stern on one side of it. You know, it's just kind of be like, no, you got to wear. A, a sports suit. coat on the sideline, yeah. yeah, suit and sports coat. You can't, you can't just go out there with your thuggish tattoos and everything else. You put those cornrows away. What are you doing to the integrity of our game? Um, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But uh, he was so important, and I think just his approach to attacking the basket, getting knocked down, getting back up, those were the hallmarks of Dwayne's career. Uh, right. At the same time, I guess just because of my affiliation with the team, I'm a little surprised that he didn't seek out Chris. Or Pat Riley, Chris uh, Bosch, you mean? Ray Allen, yeah, Chris Bosch. Sorry, or, okay. uh, or or I know Chris Bosch is helping. I didn't realize you guys were on a first name basis, but that's... for sure. Um, hey, you know, it's funny. Uh, I I just got my uh, my approval to be uh, in Springfield for the enshrinement yesterday, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I will ask Dwayne Wade about that uh, very same thing. Why choose Iverson and not Pat Riley? I still think there's a gripe there, and I think it also kind of like highlights. And again, well, I'm totally fine with Dwayne choosing Iverson, but I think that there's a, a split there between Dwayne and the Heat organization. And that's why he didn't choose Pat Ryan. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm asking you a question. But aren't, don't when you you have the onstage presenter and then you have several people give speeches, yeah? Just the the inductees themselves. Uh, and only if, like, it's somebody who's passed. Like, I don't think Iverson's going to say anything about Dwayne Wade. He's just going to be up on stage. I, I mean, I, it's a little sad yeah. now, especially in light of his passing. But, like, with Bill Russell... Like he was up on stage, and um, you know there were several Alonzo Mourning. Uh, Patrick, well, they're like uh, they're like sitting next to him, like almost like comedy roast style. Correct. Like it's like they're just standing, <laughs> kind so, of behind and to the side of him. Yeah, I I feel like I felt like people give speeches. No, like Pat Riley well, won't say like five yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think I think Pat says like you know in this case Alan AI will say something about. It. But then, right. like what I'm asking is like Iverson will say like a couple things. Yeah, and then yeah, like yeah, Pat, yeah, bit, yeah. Pat will say a couple things, and then Zoe, and then Chris, Chris, like it won't go down the line. Like all of them won't get a chance, or they just sit there. I think I think it's show. just one. I think that they they all have they all sit there, but not all of them speak. I think just okay. one person kind of speaks. You know, if you have multiple quote unquote presenters, they're just kind of there with you as like you know just just people that you appreciate. I'm, Again, I, like a, I like it. Like, I like the I Iverson pick. I think I'm. I, you know, obviously we're, uh, I'm a little bit younger and I came up with Allen Iverson and, and Kevin Garnett. Those were like the guys and obviously D Wade, but like even before D Wade, I was thinking about Iverson and Kevin Garnett. Those are the guys and Kobe that got me into the NBA. And then obviously mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade made me the, like a big Miami heat fan and then just sort of took off from there. Um, so I like Iverson. I like the pick too, because we've heard Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra and Udonis Haslam and Alonzo. Like we've heard a lot of what it is that these guys have to say about Dwayne Wade. I don't know that I've heard Allen Iverson speak at length about D Wade. He has to be I a hall like, of fame inductee too. That's the other thing. It's, it has yes, to be a hall true. of fame inductee. Right? That has so that, that can be the be UD. presenter. As much as we love him, he's not a hall of famer. Yeah. Right. Good point. Good point. But Pat Riley could have been Chris Bosch could have been since he was Ray just Allen. recently Ray Allen. But it's like, you know, to me, if yeah. I'm Dwayne Wade, I am like, it would, how cool would that be to have your, your hero do this for you? To, and and you guys get enshrined into the same thing, both of you, Hall of Famers now, and the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. I think it's really cool. There was that viral video that went by, I think, uh, during the All Star Weekend, where it was Dwayne Wade and Allen Iverson sharing a hug. I th I, I have to think that they maybe have connected in a very oh, meaningful yeah. way post career, post Dwayne Wade's retirement. Um, that has led to maybe this year off the court. I'm maybe I, I, would, I, I wouldn't doubt if he asked Michael Jordan, and Jordan was like, I don't know. Dwayne Wade to ask Michael Jordan. I don't think that they have any relationship to speak of. Right. That's, but, that's but obviously like D Wade has a huge relationship with AI. So I think yeah. that's what we're at. I don't, I don't, I didn't read that as maybe uh lingering feelings between him and the Miami Heat. I just think like AI's his man, like that's his hero. Uh, he wore the shooting sleeve because of Allen Iverson. Braid Wade was a direct disciple of Allen Iverson. Oh hell, like, he wore the three because of him too, didn't he? Yeah, like he loves this guy. And to have your All hero right, do this. Never mind. For All you, right, fine. You're in? Okay. You You're in. All right, moving on. <laughs> the, the, the David heads come, the West heads. Dion Waiters told Bleacher Reports Chris Haynes that his biggest career regret is how he handled his time with the Miami Heat, saying, quote, I was so irresponsible and immature. I let the Heat down. They were good to me. I did not handle it well at all. 
The things that were going on were avoidable if I had just shut the hell up and let my agent handle a lot of that stuff. And if I did that, we wouldn't even be here today. I'd still be playing. Do you agree, David? Uh, yes, but I think uh, it lets the Heat organization off the hook a little bit too much for my taste. But that's just me. I, I, like, I, I don't... I don't deny there's some culpability on Dion's side of things because he didn't handle well, because he was frustrated. And I made the point when you weren't with the show, you know, about how important basketball was to Dion. And he kind of hints at the same things. Like for him, basketball was so important. And for him to lose his job, for him to get hurt, for him to get rushed back from injury from the Heat medical staff, it's the same thing that they did with Justice Winslow. Like those put him in, on an unfair disadvantage where he couldn't play to the best of his abilities and he kept having a recurring injury as a result. And I, and I think uh, the the Heat front office and coaching staff uh, held it against him. And, and I think uh, Dion didn't respond well. I, and, I, and so that's why I think there was equal parts blame here between the the, the Heat and Dion. Like the, maybe they didn't treat Dion to the best of their ability. Although I know a lot of fans will argue, well, he they paid him, but at the same time he just wasn't healthy, unfortunately. And then when he lost his starting job, he was pissed off and he handled it immaturely, as he admits. So I, I'm right. glad for him to have that kind of moment of clarity at this point and be able to say, yeah, I screwed up. Accountability. I, I a, yeah. Accountability. I, I made a, I made a mistake. I didn't handle it well. And I wish I could have uh, redone. Um, yeah. That's where I, I just, I like the accountability here. And look, I don't think that this is breaking news that Dion waiters is a little bit of a bonehead during his NBA career. I think that was pretty much out there. That was kind of known stuff that he could have handled things a little bit more maturely. He got three suspensions between the start of the season to the end of December, three suspensions in 2019 by the Miami heat. One for so, for uh, uh, griping about his role on social media. You mentioned losing the starting job. Got suspended for the start of the season because of that. Got suspended again because of the weed gummy incident uh, where he had a panic attack on the plane. And then got suspended again after that uh, because he called out of work sick and then posted something about celebrating his birthday on social media. So they suspended him after that. Now, to your point, were there lingering feelings? Was there tension built up yeah. before that? Yeah, probably. But also that stuff was stupid. That was dumb stuff to do. And uh, I'm glad that there's some accountability there. And I, he's 31 years old now. I don't know that he would still be in the league if not for those things. I don't know if he would still be on the Miami Heat if he didn't do those things and if he showed a little bit more accountability and a little bit more professionalism and all that kind of stuff. And I'm with you. There's both sides to this, too. But we're talking about Dion's side of the story here. Um, he worked out, private workout in Las Vegas. I would be very surprised if there's a reunion between him and the Miami Heat. I hope he gets a training camp invite. I hope he has a chance. Obviously, with three years off between game, uh, uh, since he last played in the NBA, there's going to be questions about, you know, is, what kind of shape is he in? Is he still in basketball shape? All these kinds of things. What's, what's his game at? Um, but I hope he gets at least a chance to show out. And apparently he did uh, during a private workout in Las Vegas. Last thing here, uh, the NBA is going implement, to implement two new rules this season. First one, coaches are going to get a second challenge if their first challenge is successful. And then the league will begin... Uh, penalizing a flopping call. This is the second one by calling a technical foul and awarding the opponent a free throw. So the first thing on the coach's second challenge, David, I hate that. I hate that there's any challenges. I hate the coach's challenge. Get rid of it. I think it's dumb. It slows the game down and I don't find that much value in it. If you get the call wrong, you get the call wrong. It's not like the heat haven't gotten screwed by bad calls and haven't been able to challenge him anyway. Max Drew stepping on the line, etc. cetera. Um, but Eric Spolstra's, Actually, doesn't use him anyway. Challenge. Spo wants a second challenge. Well, he's so scared to use the first challenge and running out of challenges, he wants a second challenge. So maybe he'll use the first challenge. But only if he gets it right. So that's why he's not going to use it. It's like it's not going. He's only going to get the second challenge if he gets it right. Well, now so he's just he not use it in the maybe. third quarter instead of the, the last five minutes. His success rate was pretty high, right? No doubt, because he so, never uses him because he right. waits till like the last minute. He only like, waits until he's holding player. aces to go in. That's it. Like that's all he wants to do. Um, but the penalize. In terms of penalizing flopping, do you like the new rule? Calling a tech uh, foul on the flopper, and then the opponent gets a free throw. I think it's a big much ado about nothing. Uh, and again, I, I don't think it's going to impact Miami because I think as well. Aside from Kyle Lowry, I don't think there's a lot of flopping activity. Kevin on the Love roster. I don't think he flops. I think he shows a lot of charges. Like, Does that? Yeah, I think he positions himself. That and he be knows different? I do wonder the if they'll call second. that differently. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but we've seen this before, like the the points of emphasis, right? They're 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 really strong. That whistle is going to be going crazy in mid November, and by the time January February rolls around, it's like, eh, do I really want to call that? I don't think so. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Coming it's up, nice that they're he... looking at changes. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, you're right. I think if anybody's got the most to lose because of flopping, it's Kyle Lowry. He's a flopper. 
that guy's gonna get called. And he's like sort of one of he's like it's like him, Ari James, Philadelphia. Harden, James Harden. Yeah, like Joel Embiid. There's some poster players for flopping. And when the NBA comes in and tries to have a heavy hand with this early in the season, it's those guys that they're gonna go after. Um, Kyle Lowry's gonna have to watch out a little bit and, and maybe cool off the flopping a little bit, at least to start the season. Uh, coming up, if the Heat fail to land Damian Lillard, should they get out of the whale chasing business altogether? We're going to talk about that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode of Locked on Heat is brought to you by Bird Dogs. The pitch here is a simple one. Bird Dogs, they make you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, and they're going to fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. Instead, Bird Dogs fixes this issue. And they did it by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so that you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Plus, Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. I don't think, for example, uh, our friends in maybe Locked On Timberwolves need the the anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool it's and dry hard, all day long. You know, uh, but here in Miami. We need that. And I love my bird dogs. I love wearing them in the summer. I need a few go-to pairs of shorts during the summer. And I've got half a dozen pair of bird dogs that are on rotation. You can get them too. All you have to do is go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA and enter the promo code locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's why birddogs.com slash locked on NBA is giving you a free Yeti style tumbler. You're not going to want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Every day, make sure that you're subscribed for the latest on Damian Lillard, Summer League, the Heat's offseason. You can do that. Just subscribe on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Our friend Ira Winderman pointed out in a recent column for the South Florida Sun Sentinel that the Heat have made a habit of waiting on stars while allowing the offseason business to kind of pr- uh, pass them by, whether it was missing out on key free agents last summer while they're waiting on Kevin Durant uh, and even now putting uh, filling out the roster on hold while trying to figure out this whole Damian Lillard situation. So, look, if the Heat land Damian Lillard, David, obviously everything's fine. Everything's okay. No one's going to talk about how the Heat missed out on signing Malik Beasley, right? But for Dark if, for, if for whatever reason they don't land Dame, do you think the Heat should just get out of the star-chasing business? Has it cost them maybe even too much at this point? I do, um, because I, I've always thought that this roster was good enough as constructed, and it was more about making those changes on the fringes. I think they have two stars. I think they have a half up and coming star in Tyler Hero, and I think they also had they made improvements to the roster that you know were different than just adding Cody Zeller and Kevin Love at the trade buyout. Uh, I said sorry. Yeah, that I think their chances of advancing would have been even better. And look, they, they made it all the way to the NBA finals regardless. So, you know, I asked Pat Riley about why I didn't make a trade at the deadline. He was like, Oh, we didn't find anything good enough. We didn't want to give up our assets. It's like, well, what are, you're holding on to those assets to acquire said superstar. And I get that. But at the same time, it just feels like it's too much of a, a risk. It feels a little bit too uh, Sam Hinkie ish, you know, making that big swing just so you can get an opportunity. Um, you know, you want to keep, being in the in play for superstar acquisitions, but you'd miss out on the chance to just ha- make different, better improvements all the way around. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it would have mm-hmm. entailed. And I, look, and this all feels like a conversation that shifted over the last couple of years because, you know, it, two seasons ago, they made the moves that they felt were necessary in adding P.J. Tucker and Kyle Lowry. Like, those were supposed to keep that window going for Jimmy Butler and Bam and bio so that they would have at least a quad, you know, one, maybe one or two championships in that time frame, And it just hasn't happened for them. It just didn't work out because Kyle hasn't been the player they thought they were getting in 2021. Um, you know, so I, I think and they had thought they were going to re resign PJ Tucker. They thought they were, they had their, their roster set for the next couple of seasons and it just hasn't worked out that way. And, 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 and there's your point. Um, that team, it's weird to say this, but I think, you know, based on just the odds, after signing Kyle Lowry, signing and getting him, and getting uh, P.J. Tucker, they earned the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. They didn't make the NBA Finals, but their odds were better to make the NBA Finals than the team that finished eighth 
in the out of the playing tournament this last season that obviously ultimately went to the NBA finals. They defied the odds. We all know that the heat defied the yeah. odds by making it to the NBA finals. The team that finished number one was the team that had the better chance to make it to the NBA finals. And of course they were a shot away from it, but that was a team that made the fringe moves that you're talking about, right? Because they weren't involved in trying to find some other superstar. We got Jimmy Butler. We got Bam Adebayo. We want to see if Tyler hero takes a leap. Let's go get, what did uh, Pat Riley call it? Sh- swords and shields, right? And yeah. and he went and found Tucker and Lowry. Those are those fringe moves, right? Nobody was saying, sitting there saying like, hey, we think Kyle Lowry is a good player, but we don't think he's a superstar. Nobody's calling him a superstar. So right. I, I'm i going to bring he up- He was a, a top free agent a couple of years ago to, to the same point from the first segment. Yeah, yeah. Like when we were looking at the, the top free agents of the year, it was him. Like right. Miami won free agency. That's Who knows? Like what if they, instead of looking for a Damian Lillard or something like that this off season- what if they went after a Fred Van Vliet or something like that? I don't know that that would have. I was. I'm not the biggest Fred Van Vliet guy in, in terms of long term value, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, Wes Heads will bring, will bring up this name, John Collins, who he lost out on. Um, like over the last couple of years, I thought that he could have been a guy that maybe you could have gotten for basically nothing. It might have just cost you one minor asset that you're otherwise, to your point, David, holding on to because you're just hoarding whatever you have in in case you are able to to make chase on a big star uh, player. This is again from Iris column. And he, he outlines basically what's what the heat have missed out on over the last 10 years. Obviously this year, we're still waiting to see if the Damian Lillard thing, uh, how that plays out. But last year, Donovan Mitchell, they wanted him. Didn't work. Kevin Durant, they wanted him. Didn't work in 2018. The year before they went for Jimmy Butler, yeah. they first went for Jimmy Butler and it didn't work out. He ended up getting traded to Minnesota. So That's ridiculous. That, that, that is just 2017. Like, I, I, yeah. Gordon Hayward. 2016, Kevin Durant. Marcus Aldridge. 2015, Lamarcus Aldridge. 2014, they went after Pau Gasol. Ridiculous. So basically, since LeBron left, they've the only star that they've gotten was Jimmy Butler. Why is that ridiculous? It's true. Because it's it's so. I mean, like you're taking out all the context again. I know what Ira is. I doing am. I am. Somebody asked him a question. No. Okay. No, yeah. Ira wrote a whole column about it. I don't know if he. I don't know if it was an. Ask I haven't Ira had thing. a chance to read it, Ira. Sorry, I know you're listening. No, no to this there was. I. Right I now. am. Not, no. No. You're absolutely right. I am stripping away the context. I am doing that. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like they, they went after LaMarcus when they had a, a good team. I remember, this was about Chris Bosch was still a member of that group. They still yeah. thought there was a chance for him to play. So it was a and they had no cap space that year. Yeah. And Pat Riley knew it. They, they met with LaMarcus just to kind of say, you know what? We want to keep these these, these fires going. We appreciate, uh, you know, you granting us a meeting. And he basically told him, look. Do what's best for you. Get your money. Be go put yourself in a position where you can be the player that you want to be. And he chose to go to the San Antonio Spurs. It didn't work out for him either. And again, you know, he, he was not the player he was in Portland because well, he didn't have. David, I, I, I was just I, I, all that aside. It's true, right? They went after some of these guys and they didn't get any of these guys. Even if you're trying to keep the bridges open for Mark, Ros- you didn't end up getting the Marcus Soldiers. And yeah, he wasn't the player he was anymore after that, and there was really no market for him. We were going to compete with but, the Hampton Five either, right? I mean, I mean, sure. A couple of years, but later. the point remains: you've only gotten one superstar, and you just said you started off your answer that you don't even think they should be in the superstar game anyway; that they should be working the fringes, regardless. So this year, this year, next oh. year, when this year. So you like, think I, right now you should I'm pull like, out of the Damian Lillard thing? I mean, it's too late now, I guess. I guess in retrospect, yeah. you should have never you done it. You already heard Tyler's feelings. I mean, like, what are you going to do? Like, you basically yeah. put him on the trading block for the last kinda, couple of yeah. seasons. It's kind of yeah, too late you, now. you, you got to move on. Um, so that's different. Like, you, you're, you, all your chips are in now. And if they don't get Dame, if he gets traded to Brooklyn or Oklahoma City, if, if Joe Cronin screws the pooch yet again, um, then I think Miami should do what they can to reestablish their relationship with Tyler and then look to make some minor upgrade. Uh, but what about next year? When James Harden is a free, or whatever, like whoever, not James Harden, like a better, more interesting name, I guess. Like, do you think, if you miss out on Dame now, and you've got what, maybe another year after this one of Jimmy prime Jimmy Butler at this level, let's just say, mm-hmm. like, can you afford to, face, to chase a star anymore? Or do you think that they should just pull out of this whale chasing business? It's the same question I asked you at the beginning. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Stop doing they it. should build yeah, build the roster out to, to just get Jimmy the help um, that he needs. Not necessarily superstar level help. Uh, it's an unattributed quote, but I think it's one that many people have heard. Um, when it comes to whale chasing, I think that this is basically the Heat's MO. It's a pirate's life for me. I just think that this is what the Heat do. They just chase stars. This is what they want. 
They like the undrafted thing. They like the developmental program. But the only reason they have a developmental program is because stars are expensive and those guys are cheap. That's the only reason they have it. It's to supplement the rest, the rest of the roster. I don't think that there's any way that you change. As long as Pat Riley is in charge, yeah, this is a team of pirates, man. Like That's an organization full of pirates. It's a bunch of Captain Ahabs looking for their white whale. And that's just what they do. That is that you can't. That, that quote is that a Herman Melville? What is that from Moby Dick? That that's uh, I believe it is Moby Dick. Um, <laughs> our our dickheads will uh, will know that one. But um, it's uh, <laughs> Woo, smells, flew that one under the radar. There, no. Yeah, yeah. No, this is uh, this is late stage podcasting. Um, I just don't think you're gonna you're not gonna change them. This is what they do. I don't care that they strike out. I like the chase. It's the thrill of the chase. And yeah, if you're you like if, about basketball, Wes, it just seems like I, I, you're well, all about turnover more than anything else. No, I want championships, baby. And I think this team does. And and this is you know a uh, a big. This is a divisive. Uh, this might be like the hot button issue between the West heads and the David heads. You think this team is good enough to win a championship as currently constructed? And I think they do need a superstar. And I think they hate. I think the Heat think they need a superstar, right? Because when they had the three of them, when they had LeBron, D Wade, and Chris Bosh, they were looking for your ring chasing Ray Allen's and Mike Miller's and Shane Battier's and those guys. They weren't looking for that other superstar. Was that the era um, that defined you best, or was it early Dwayne Wade? Because I think that changes a uh, lot about how you, you look at team building. The Shaq trade changed everything for me, because before the the Shaq trade for me, I was like, do you really give up Brian Grant? Karan Butler, Lamar Odom. I love Hell that no. team. I love that team. And then I really struggled with it. Yeah, 0304 was like the one of the best teams ever. It was so fun to watch that. Yeah. And I, I thought I loved that team. And I and they made the playoffs. I was like, and DUA was young. And you're like, hey, and like obviously Karan Butler was Star. young. Lamar Odom was pretty young still at that. I think he was 26, 27 at that point. Oh, like, I think he was younger. Was he, he might he, even he be younger? Signed, yeah. Yeah, so, I think he was drafted like after one year at the University of Rhode Island. I mean, I don't love our own. I mean, was one year and he went to the Clippers and then he entered restricted free agency. So he was like on a four year rookie deal. So he might have been like 23, 24. So I think, yeah, I was like, yeah, just keep him young. Like, let's go. Let's ride this out. And Pat Riley was like, nah, we're going to go get Shaq. And then they won a championship two years later. And so that changed everything for me. That changed everything. Right. I was like, yeah, no, go get Shaq. Obviously, you just go get Shaq because you won a championship. And then he went and got LeBron. Then he went and got Chris Bosh, and you re-signed Dwayne Wade, and then you won two more championships. It's every time the team has chased the stars, that's when the championships have come. They have never won a championship doing it any other way. They've had successful seasons, but they've never won a championship doing it any other way. But you don't like championships; you don't care about them. So that's the difference. Nope. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat twenty-three. Your Odom was twenty-three. His 23 first year. Twenty-three when they brought him. Yeah, he was. Born. Wow, man, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, time flies. Yeah. He's only still. He's still only forty-three, so it's not that. Big. He should do a private workout in Las Vegas. He should probably not go to Las Vegas. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Every day is make sure that you are subscribed for the latest on Damian Lillard's Summer League and the Heat's offseason. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcast app, David. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course.